Sandy was born and raised in San Jose, California, where she got to see the rise of the Silicon Valley and the tech industry. After graduating from UC Davis with degrees in economics and communications, she went back to San Jose and started her career in corporate marketing. During this time, she was blogging and creating videos on the side about fashion and beauty. In 2017, she left the corporate office in hopes of turning her side thing into her main thing. She now resides in LA and is a full-time content creator and influencer. She has worked with brands like Sephora, Dior, Glam Glow, and Innisfree. Glow Radio is a podcast for sassy entrepreneurs who are in the process of quitting their much-hated day job to work for themselves full-time. You can expect weekly conversations with unapologetic creatives, business owners, and influencers. We discuss tips on how to reach your goals, manage your time, and keep your sanity while being a major boss babe. We are Jacqueline and Clara, your favorite hype women who will cheer you on and push you to create the life that you want. We're business strategists, career and life mentors, and wellness advocates. Hit that subscribe button and follow us on IG at Glow Radio Co. Stay sassy, babes. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Glow Radio. We are so excited today. We have an LA-based influencer joining us. Her name is Sandy, and we are so, so excited to chat with her. We know how much you guys love hearing our conversations with like YouTubers, Instagrammers, so... We're just going to jump right in. So, Sandy, why did you decide to start your YouTube channel? It actually started off with a blog. So, after I've always loved blogging, like um, when I was young, I did Zanga, like Tumblr, GeoCities, if you guys like remember that. Um, so, I always loved building websites and coding. I thought it was really fun. And so, after I graduated college, um, I just started a blog to talk about fashion and um, like makeup here and there, not too much, but a little bit. And then, um, a friend and I had started kind of doing it at the same time. Like she started doing YouTube and I was blogging. So we would get together and help each other shoot. And then over time, like she was encouraging me to start a YouTube channel. And I was like really hesitant at first because it's way different than taking photos. It's like live action videos. Like I felt like I couldn't mess up and I felt so vulnerable and exposed, but eventually I tried it and it was really fun. And I loved editing. Um, like it's, very similar to building a website, like you create something and you see it visually, it's, it's really cool. So um, that's kind of how the YouTube channel started. Cool. Awesome. I just yeah. gotta say, Zanga though was the shit. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I, I would go with Zanga like all the time. I think you could like add music, like you had those codes where you could add music and like words yeah. that move on the screen or something. Yeah, yeah, I loved it. So I've always kind of loved sharing bits and pieces of my life like growing up so yeah it's crazy that now it's become kind of like this industry yeah were you all, had you always been like camera shy or anything or just you just went um, in yeah yeah I think I, I was I still am kind of camera shy um like I still get really awkward when I have to take photos and I'm just like really uncomfortable um but yeah so yeah I, I <laughs> was and I would like take photos like of my makeup like at home and now I'm just sharing it publicly so so it still takes some getting used to for me so when you're actually how do you kind of get over the jitters of being in front of the camera then like let's say you're going for a shoot right now mm -hmm. um I just have to make sure that I feel good <laughs> and part of it is like mentally feeling good emotionally feeling good but also like like wearing clothes that I feel good in also mm -hmm. like not that I look good in but that I feel good in um so yeah just overall making sure that I'm in a good comfortable state like and anything can throw it off from like something like more serious to even just like big pimple can make me feel uncomfortable or self-conscious sometimes um I've gotten a little better about it um but yeah it's just all about feeling comfortable with myself so uh, can you tell us uh, three facts about you that people might not know? Yes. <laughs> I thought about this one. Oh, my gosh. Um, so my, the first fact, I don't really share this 
a lot. So this is kind of like, oh my gosh, me opening up. But um, my first one is that I actually really love to write. Um, and I, but I don't write very often anymore. But when I was younger, I like won like essay contests and my short story and poetry would be posted on the wall. And wow. um, yeah, so I, I really love writing and um, I still do, but I just don't prioritize it right now. Um, but I, it's just very like, like it's a really nice release. Um, my second one is, oh, um, I love oceans and beaches and marine life so much that, um, in high school I wanted to, I contemplated, I thought about it, about going, uh, about being a marine biologist. So I actually applied to like a marine biology school and got accepted. But in the end, um, I knew I, science is not my forte, so I didn't pursue it, but it was something that like I really loved and like hope to get like hope to help with ocean like conservation one day um and my last one is um my favorite thing to do ever is to sing I think like when I was younger I wanted to be a singer and I just love music so much um like I'm really really passionate about it and how people connect through music so um yeah those are my three facts that not a lot of people know <laughs> That's oh really gosh. cool. You should totally make a video of you, like, at least lip syncing. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I definitely posted, like, short form clips on my Instagram. But every time I do it, I'm like, ah, like, it's just such a, like, vulnerable thing for me. But, like, uh -huh. if I... If I can sing in front of someone, that means I'm really comfortable in front of them. Mm. Um, karaoke doesn't count because that's like liquid courage. Like if I'm <laughs> sober and singing in front of someone, like that means I'm really comfortable. Okay, mm. true. So true. <laughs> yeah. So what uh, got you into doing makeup? I just always loved it. Like I've just always loved media and pop culture and like how creative it is and just the self-expression of it. Like I love being able to express different parts of my personality or someone else's personality through makeup and just playing around with looks. Like it's, it's all just about having fun and feeling good about yourself. And I remember like I first got into makeup in like middle school. Like that was when I bought my first makeup product. It was like an eyeliner pencil and I tried it out and it looked probably really bad um, <laughs> like I would only put it on the lower lash line and it was just not it was not a good look but I've just always loved like the creative aspect of it of like like kind of like just drawing on your face like I, I used to draw a lot as a child too and so I guess it just kind of transferred over to, to this <laughs> yeah because I noticed that you had a lot of the um, Korean pop stars that you were channeling through <laughs> would you do anyone that's like not k-pop or like anyone I guess in the uh, Hollywood yeah. world um yeah I, I have like I've recreated the one that I can think of most recently is like Lily Collins I recreated one of her like red eye makeup looks um I think that was like about last year but I actually find a lot of my inspiration on Pinterest like I'll just look up the makeup tag and I'll save it and then I'll just recreate it and do my own version of it because I mean a lot of the looks that you see online and magazines on TV are for um like uh, they're more Western looks. Mm -hmm. So I just transfer it over to my eye shape and my look and make it work for me. So um, the Korean, the K-pop ones just get a lot more attention because it's like super famous. Like their makeups are, their makeup style is very bold and bright and out there. Um, but I think, yeah, maybe I should try a Western look. <laughs> I, haven't tried, I haven't really tried like a big Western celebrity look. I think that they're, yeah, I should try that. But yeah, I'm doing a lot of like, model model makeup looks that I find on Pinterest. Yeah. Cool. So how did you get into fashion? Um very similarly, like along with makeup, like I just always loved um self expression and um just dressing how I felt, like my mood or a style and um it's just kind of like I don't know, like, when you feel good in an outfit, it, you just, like, when you feel good, you look good, like, you know, it's kind of like a cycle. <clears throat> and so it's just the creative aspect of it that I really love. And throwing colors and textures together and throwing together, like, different pieces to create an overall look, it's just really, like, visually to me, like, really cool, like, to be able to do that. So going back to YouTube for a quick second here, what do you feel like are the types of videos that are most popular with your fans? Ooh, 
that that's a hard one for me to say because I did start off doing fashion and creating lookbooks and styling videos, but over the past year or so, I've I've done more makeup. Um, so I would still say I want to say fashion still because a lot of people like initially subscribed to me for the fashion videos and those are the ones that I get to play around with a bit more in terms of concept editing like I I do love to edit and like get technical with it so and I think a lot of my viewers find that really fun to watch um, but there has been kind of a shift away from that style and more into like the quick like educational type things like like learning how to do makeup or uh, like more vlogging lifestyle content so um Overall, I still have like my heart in fashion. And I think a lot of people do still love my fashion videos. And um, I think the people on Instagram do love the makeup looks and the tutorials. So I get traffic from there. So it's hard for me to say. Yeah. What do you usually do to get more audience engagement? Like, what are your tips for that? Um, like, to be completely honest, audience engagement isn't something I think about all the time. Um, it was something I thought about more in the past, like doing giveaways or asking people, like, do you like photo one better or photo two better? But it just didn't feel like something I, like, really liked to do, like, kind of, like, fishing for engagement. Um, it stressed me out pretty much, like, mm -hmm. worrying about the numbers and all that stuff. and. Um, it just kind of, yeah, like, oh, you know, obviously there's a huge, um, focus right now on mental health in terms of like the social media industry. And I think, um, when I focus too much on the engagement and the numbers, like it does take a toll and stresses me out sometimes. So right now I'm honestly just focusing on creating things that I like. And, um, if it resonates with people, then that's great. And if it doesn't, then that's fine. And I think like, What's important to me is that there has to be that middle ground. Like I still have to enjoy the content I create and my followers or viewers like have to also enjoy the content I create. And if they don't or I don't, then the content isn't really for either for both of us. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I, I really like value organic engagement and um, like I'm not a big fan of clickbait type of things. Um, so I think just being the times that I feel people really resonate with is when I do open up and share my experiences like things that I've gone through um like because people can connect with me and connect with others because they don't feel so alone and that's also ties into like why I love music so much because people listen to music so they don't feel so alone it's like that connection um that I think I really care about in terms of engagement and I think is what other gets other people thinking and um and engaged as well so I hope that answered your question. Uh, thank you. Uh, honestly, that was that was amazing. Like, I feel like everybody gets lost yeah. in the whole. Oh my god, how do I get more people to listen or you know or watch or whatever? And then yeah, like we like we've gone through that too, where we're like, what are we doing? Like yeah, like we should put more of our own essence into it, right? Like rather than just like, what do people like or something? Mm -hmm. so. Exactly. Yeah. So. Like, I mean, sometimes I still get caught up in it. Like, of course, I want to do things that people like, but I have to remember, like, do I like this too? Or do I think I like it because I want other people to like it? So it's really been like the past couple of years have just been me really learning that and finding out what it, what is it exactly that I really like that is not kind of put on me by society or other people's expectations. So um, I think that's really important. And yeah, it is kind of playing like the long game by not doing like the quick bait or doing giveaways like every week or something like that. But it feels more genuine to me. And I enjoy it that more than if I than just to have a bunch of numbers and a bunch of engagement. So yeah. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah. So what do you feel like was your like first big break that like kind of pushed you to be able to do this full time? Honestly, sometimes I still feel like I'm waiting for the big break. Um, I think when I decided to pursue this full time, it really was a risk because I didn't have a big break. Um, I had just like saved up a lot of money. Like it was like three, like three years in the making where I was like, I know I want to do this, but I'm not sure. And it was just a lot of contemplating going back and forth. And eventually I was like, I just want to do it. I'm, I'm going to take the risk. So it wasn't like, oh, the big break came and now I feel like I can do it. It was just a very like 
gradual, slow process. Mm -hmm. Like, of course, like there was some momentum, but it wasn't like a big break. Like, yes, I I can go do this. I can go out there. And so, um, yeah, it it was a very long thinking process. (laughs) How did, uh, how did like brands start discovering you in the beginning? I honestly have no idea. (laughs) I I think like just posting content and I'm trying to remember like the first few brands that reached out to me and how they saw me. And I think like, it's just like specific videos they would find. Like I would do a very specific like makeup video or people are looking for um, like a certain type of tutorial. Um, Actually one of my friends, um, who worked for a brand no, well before she wasn't my friend but she's my friend now but she worked for a brand and she was looking up like monolid makeup tips um, and that's how she found me and then she like pitched me to the brand and it worked out really well so I think initially that's kind of how I got discovered and it's still kind of the same it's like post like just continually like putting content out there for people to see and hear and um, absorb pretty much um, so yeah, it's just getting your name out there and posting as much as you can. Like it was a lot. Like I remember I used to post on Instagram twice a day and now I like I can't even imagine doing that. Like that's I don't know how I even used to do that, but I think it is just like being consistent is so important and I hear I've heard that so much um since I've moved out to LA, like being consistent, like constantly uploading, making sure you don't fall off. Like that's really important, especially with like the algorithms and all of that. So um, it is just putting your work out there, I think. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I'm actually really curious. So when you decided to pursue this full time, how did your parents react? Like when you told them, oh, hey, I'm going to be an influencer, you know, or you. Yeah. Yeah. I think like um, so I left my full time job, I think about two years ago now. Um, and at the time, influencer wasn't that big of a term. It wasn't like everyone was using it. It was just like kind of creeping up. So um, I didn't even I didn't I didn't even have that word to use at the time. I was just like, hey, um, I I told my mom first because I knew she would be she would take it the hardest. <laughs> and um, she, I told her like, hey, I I'm gonna, like I told her after I quit my job. I was like, hey, I'm leaving my job. Um, my last day is in so and so month. I'm going to try and do this side thing full time. And uh, she was very worried, like very apprehensive. And she was just so scared for me because she was like, why are you leaving your stable job? You're making good money. You can make more money. And like, I, I knew what I was giving up because I had a lot of good managers around me who could help build up my marketing career and really just, I just had a a really great trajectory there. And my mom was kind of like, why are you throwing this away? And, um, like she over time, like, you know, she came around, um, but yeah, she took it very, like, she was just worried. My dad, um, has, my dad's pretty chill. Um, so I didn't even tell him in person. I texted him. Like we were, we were in the same house and I texted him because I was like, I can't do this in person again. Like I need to do it over a text or something. Cause I'm so stressed. Like talking to her, I was like crying. Cause I was like, why can't you just support me? Mm-hmm. Um, but my dad, um, he's always kind of wanted me to be an entrepreneur and like start my own business. And like he was, he used to tell me that when I was like in elementary school, when I had no idea what that even meant. And I was like, I don't want to do that dad. Like stop. So when I told him, um, that I was going to do this full time, he was actually really supportive. He was like, Hey, like, good for you I'm like I'm here if you need me and he was like what are you gonna do about health insurance and like all this stuff um like his initial reaction was really it was really supportive of course like they both kind of like wavered up and down throughout the the couple of years but that's totally understandable um but yeah so two very different uh reactions from my parents Oh my gosh. That sounds yeah. very crazy. But it's good that your mom came around, I I assume. Yeah, yeah. yeah. She, she came around, I think. Um yeah, she's she's I mean she's, I'm always parents. like a baby girl. I know. I'm just like she's come around and she's still like, When are you gonna go back to work? Like I had to fight oh. off those comments a lot. Like even now she's like she 
<laughs> she's it's like there are times that I go home and she's like when are you coming home when are you gonna go back to work why don't you just go back to work and I'm just like oh my gosh like I'm not having this conversation and uh, I just I just moved into my new apartment and like my own apartment for the first time and they came to visit and um I think she's definitely taking me a lot more seriously now with mm. this this path so um that's nice but I know she'll always be worried for me and seeing yeah. with my dad it's just like yeah parents We'll do that. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's a very common thing. Yeah. Asian parents. Yeah. <laughs> They're like, okay. I know. So as an influencer, like, what are your different streams of income? <laughs> influencer is still such a weird thing to call myself. Like, it's um, still, still so new to me. But anyway, um, my different streams of income are... Um, of course, like affiliate links, um, ads through the videos on YouTube and um, brand partnerships. Um, so, yeah, majority is through brand brand partnerships. Okay. What well, What's your favorite one to do? Definitely brand partnerships, um, because there's just more fun in that. I think like with the affiliate links, it's like copy paste the link. You have to go find it and mm. all of this. And sometimes you can't find it. And uh, there's, it's just a lot of nuisance, I think. Um, in terms of video ads, that's also like, I don't have a lot of control over what ads get played over the video on YouTube. I don't know. I, I just let it do its thing. And if I make money from it, that's great. Like mm. I just don't. Yeah. Um, and then for brand, like brand sponsorships, I love doing those because um, it just feels amazing to be able to work with a brand that you actually like um, and that you want to work with and they want to work with you. Like, it's crazy to me. And it's so exciting to like, like, I remember I applied for a job at Sephora when I was still working in corporate and I didn't get an interview, none of that. So to be able to work with Sephora now, it's just like crazy to me I was like okay this is so cool like I didn't get to work with them then but I get to work with them now in such a different way and where I have a lot of creative say in what I get to do and um, brand sponsorships are also really fun because they really do challenge me creatively to think like how can I present this product in a way that's genuine but um, also educate you know people on what I'm using and they're just they're a lot more fun so yeah yeah. How how many partnerships do you usually do like per month? Does it kind of vary or? Yeah, it varies a lot, and it can get very seasonal. I think, um, like, it varies quite a bit. Like, if, mm -hmm. you know, when you do this type of almost like freelance work, it it varies quite a bit. So one month I could be doing five. One month I could be doing one. Some months I might even like in the past, I've for sure didn't have any. So it, it varies quite a lot. And I'm just so grateful to even have work, honestly. So um, it varies. Yeah, quite a bit. Yeah. So are you doing most of the reaching out nowadays? Or are brands mostly going to you, I guess? Um, right now, they're mostly going to me. Um, I've definitely reached out also. It's it just, yeah, I just feel really lucky that I haven't had to do a lot of self pitching. Um, but for now, um, what I can manage is the emails that come in. Um, yeah. <laughs> when you do do self pitching, like, what are your tips for getting brands to pay you, like, pay you your worth and your rate? I, well, I, you know, I have a media kit. I have my rates, and I tell them like, this is what I want to do. If if we're aligned, like I would love to work with you um, and kind of just pitch them the idea for the video, like have it a full, like, you know, full pitch on like what you, what I want to do and tell them like, this is how I would want to highlight your products. This is why I love your products. And this is why I think we would be a great fit. Um, I think that's really important is the alignment there. Um, like knowing that you're like, creating something that they are going to benefit from is very important because at the end of the day, it's like they're a business and they need to think about that. So um, I think just having a good solid like idea of what you want to do and why you really want to work with them rather than just getting paid and also knowing your worth. That's the really hard part is like knowing what you can and can't charge because it varies a lot too from different brands across different people in this space, like different creators, influencers, whatever. It varies quite a bit, but if you can kind of, 
back up why you're asking for this rate, then, and it's reasonable and it makes sense, like, then I, it should, you know, go pretty well, I think, you know, so most of the time, I find, um, like, companies have a set budget, and they just don't have room to allocate. So that's always a factor, too. Yeah. What are some of your future goals? Well, this is something I've struggled with for, like, the longest time because when I jumped into it I was like I'm just gonna see what happens and take it a day at day at a time and even now I'm like let's take it a day at a time like who knows and like um I think I'm still kind of thinking about what I want to do in the long run like what's after this um or am I going to do this for a really long time like I really don't know and I haven't thought that far it's so funny because all my friends are like what are your goals what are you trying to do and I'm always like I'm not really sure um one of my goals for this year was to move out and get my own apartment like to be able to live off of influencer income and um I finally did it which feels great so that was one of my goals for this year um and I feel like I'm still in the transition phase of like settling in um so I haven't thought anything beyond like tomorrow <laughs> Okay. Sorry, that's not a very great answer. <laughs> that's okay. It's, it's okay. I feel like it's one of those things that just comes to you. Like yeah. one day you're going to be like, oh, that's what I want to do. Yeah. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. So it hasn't really come to me yet. I'm just still kind of like learning about myself and what I like. And sometimes I think I know. And then other days I'm like, no, that's, that's not it. I don't want to do that anymore. So it, it's just, it, I think, I think a lot. So I fluctuate a lot. <laughs> I know yeah. what you mean. That's I, totally fine. <laughs> I think it's okay. Everyone is still trying to figure out life. And yeah. It's like yeah. totally okay. <laughs> life is hard sometimes. Very hard. <laughs> so next up here, we have a few more like fun random questions just, just to get to know your personality a little bit. Okay. So first random question is, if you had to describe your life in one word, what word would that be? Okay. So... I would, I would say, um, have you guys seen the TV show Charmed? I, I think so. Is it that with the it's witches? Old. Yeah. It's yeah. The three witches, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I would say, my, I feel like my life is very charmed. Like, it's, like, I don't know. Like, I, I used to watch that. It was my favorite TV show growing up because, like, well, they, they have a new series out yet. I mean, they have a new series out now. But I love the old ones and it just like I'm a very dreamy person and I just feel like life is like there's so much to be grateful for and like my life just feels very charming right now. It's like when do I ever get to live by myself like out in the LA area and do this type of stuff like I feel very blessed and of course like there's like bad shit coming too like we can't forget that but overall I just feel like like this is a really great life and I just feel very charmed living in this life if that makes sense I don't know like yeah. that's that's a that. word, right, mine that. would be I don't even know like chaotic or something I think that was, <laughs> mine would probably be like crazy or something <laughs> that entrepreneur like, life charmed is very charming I like, I like that. that I like that <laughs> it's like I live a, I feel like I live a very charming blessed life so mm. I don't know I was like charmed yeah <laughs> oh, I love it. love it okay second random question what's in your fridge right now okay I looked earlier. I, will, um, I always have green tea, Ito and green tea, because I love that. Have you guys had it? Yeah. I don't think oh, it's a green bottle. It's like this big. Yeah. Oh, I don't think I've had it. Maybe it's, if it's, it's it. unsweetened, right? Yeah, it's unsweetened. Well, like, like I don't know. Like it from like the Asian Ah, store, okay, like okay. Yeah, I, I don't know why I love it so much, but I'm like, I love it. Um, I also have, I have beers too, because I like beer. Um, leftover, leftover dinner, avocados, <laughs> bread, uh, ranch dressing. I don't know. <laughs> it's a little bit empty right now. Do you cook, actually? I do cook. I mean, I don't cook a lot. Like, I cook decent, I think. I don't cook <laughs> often, but I can cook. Um, it's just not my favorite thing to do. Like, I grew up helping, like, my mom cook in the kitchen. She would teach me how to, like, um cut and cook veggies like Chinese style so like with every meal I have to cook like some veggie dish um with whatever I'm eating and rice mm -hmm. yeah of course yeah right. not forget right. about the rice, right. the rice. Yeah. <laughs> so what do you usually do for self-care 
I, my favorite thing to do for self-care, if I have the time, is just to, like, lay in bed and listen to music. Like, um, it just really relaxes me, and I just feel really calm. Um, yeah, I also love going to the beach. I think that, like, I've just always loved the beach. It's really calming to me. Like, I love the sound of the waves, and anytime I need to get away, like, that is where I'll, I'll try to go. Um, so I can just chill out. Like that is my me time. And like, I, I just love going to the beach. Yeah, I agree. The beaches are so nice. I know, beach, oh. beach life. Yeah. Cause I was just in LA like a month ago, right? Oh, a month yeah. ago? Yeah. Clara went Two to LA. Ago. Yeah. I think about a month ago and I was there in March. Yeah. We love the beaches there. Oh, I don't know. We should hang out next time you guys are down here. Totally. Right? Yeah. Sure. We'll we let you know. Mm-hmm. All right. We're going to move on to our last section of the podcast. It's a this or that lightning round. So okay. whatever you choose, we will judge you a little bit. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. We're just going to judge you a little bit. I'm ready. I'm ready. All right. Number one, YouTube or Instagram? <gasps> no. No, I can't. <laughs> Do I really have to choose? Yes. <laughs> No, <laughs> that's awful. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. Instagram. Ooh. Okay. Ooh. Ooh. Oh no. <laughs> okay. Number two, library or museum? Museums. Ooh, that's hard. Ooh. <laughs> Sephora or Alta? Sephora. <laughs> Comedy or horror? Horror. Ooh, the sure. brand Celine or Dior? Oh, I have to say Dior because I worked with them. <laughs> <laughs> Pajama set or t-shirt and undies? T-shirt and undies. Singing or dancing? I believe we know the answer. What? Singing, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I was like, oh, dancing's fun too. <laughs> singing, yeah, singing. <laughs> Piercings or tattoos? I have... Oh, I have all, I have all. <laughs> tattoos. Okay. Donuts or ice cream? Oh. <laughs> ice, ice cream. These are hard. Wow. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> ice cream. And the last one, online shopping or in, in-store shopping? Uh, online. <laughs> oh, that was quick. I know. I was like, oh, I ha- oh yeah. <laughs> all, right. all right thank you so much for joining us we had so much fun me. yeah that was so much fun i i think all our listeners will enjoy that like getting a little so. <laughs> into the instagrammer world. youtuber world yeah. <laughs> yeah thanks for having me it was really fun like my it was a really great first podcast for me <laughs> yay, awesome yay so and uh where can everyone find you online like what are your handles Oh, okay. So on Instagram, it's at Hey Sandy Lynn, H E Y Sandy Lynn. And then on YouTube, you can just look up Sandy Lynn, my name, but my actual link is youtube.com slash and saltwater. Mm-hmm. Um, it was off of this one of my favorite quotes, but now it's completely like abstract. <laughs> <laughs> it's cool. It's cool. We dig it. We dig yeah. it. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. Thank All you. Right. Thank you for listening, Glow Babes. Give us our five golden stars on iTunes and we'll be your best friends, I swear. And please share this episode with your babes that need some glow and will benefit from this. Thank you. Glow.